Hey, we are here in the company of friends and with Susan G. Coleman. And this is a, so much fun today. It's a special segment for me because I have invited my beautiful girlfriends to hang out with me and just to kind of chop it up, hey. talk about a lot of good things. <laughs> and Chef Gail, who is our In the Company of Friends Ooh. chef, Hi. she Hi. prepares oh, all our delicious food. Goodness. What else do you have for us? Mm. Well, I just brought you some carrots that are cooked with some uh, shallots, some thyme, and a little bit of butter, a little bit of butter. Okay. <laughs> okay, I know you guys are hanging out tonight. I mm -hmm. want to make sure that even though you have comfort food to make it fun for you, mm -hmm. I wanted to at least make sure that we did that figure-friendly kind of oh. comfort food so we thank don't you, have to you. deal with the scale <laughs> tomorrow, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so besides the carrots, we have a salad that is shaved Brussels sprouts with apples, pomegranate mm. seeds, almonds with a little bit of apple cider and honey vinaigrette. Mm, that nice. sounds amazing. Yeah. And so we also have this Chilean sea bass, which I've cooked with some tomatoes, some lemons, and some Ooh. lovely olives. Her knees, her knees. <laughs> most black folks come for food. We got a little bit of collard yes. greens. Yes. All right, I know there's some mashed potatoes on a few plates. And for you, I made the turkey meatloaf, which we made earlier on the show. So everybody should have exactly what you need. I want you guys to enjoy. Have a wonderful time. Enjoy each other's Thank company. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Chef Gail. Yeah. Yeah. Bye -bye. Thank you. I'm we ready. are ready to grow. I'm, ready. Yes. I'm hungry. But I just want to welcome my good friend, Twinkie oh, Burke. Thank you so the much. The queen. I call Twinkie the queen. She's so regal and so wonderful. Thank one of the best casting regal. directors in L.A., darling. Thank you for having me. And a director. Me. I appreciate you. Yes, she's directing. Yes, yes. And you were in my short I film, sure. So, yes. I sure was. <laughs> And this is my one of my little boo boos, my little Jalisa. Hi. Jalisa lived with me actually for about three, four months. I did. Yeah. I did. The, the LA, the LA struggle. Yep. <laughs> Moving sure. to LA. My daughters move everybody into my house. They're like, Mom, she's a sore of mine too. Mm -hmm. Mom, but friend, she needs a place to live. Yep, that's right. You got a room. We don't live there. I was like, oh, okay. So. And then, and then we love each other. And this now. is my baby. Oh, so. And my good friend Felicia here. Hi. Hi. Now, Felicia is one of our regulars at our club here in Los Angeles, the Regency West. Shameless plug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we do events. It's an event and Taco place. Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. <laughs> but this is my girl because she supports us and she's always just there. She brings people in. But we have something in common, don't we, Felicia? Yes, and you guys jump do. in and eat. Let's no, do it. thank you, thank yes. you. I'll if I want a carrot, that. Yes, I'll yes, take a little, little carrot. But Felicia and I have something in common, don't we? Yes. We are breast cancer survivors. Wow. Yes, we are. Wow. Felicia, how, how many years are you a survivor now? It's a year. A year. Oh, wow. So it's still a new journey. It's still a new Congratulations. Journey. That's right, and but it's, it's healthy. A year, so God is good. Absolutely. Yeah. How did you find out you had breast cancer? Wow. Well, I guess at a certain oh age, you have to go to the doctor, which I kept avoiding going to the doctor, mm -hmm. so... I went and they did my mammogram and what have you, and they found a spot and they said, "Okay, you have this. Go on, go. Oh, thank you. Okay, you go check it out." So, like most people, most women, you are in denial. So, I waited the year before I even did anything. So, mm -hmm. but when I found now, did it out, get worse? Is that why you waited a year? But did the, did you have a lump or what was it? I didn't that? have anything. I mean, I didn't feel anything. Mm -hmm. So. Well, breast cancer is painless. I mean, until it gets really bad. Mm -hmm. What stage were you? Two. Okay. Stage two, so. But you were able to wait a year yes. before you got anything. Mm -hmm. And then what did you have to do after that year? Um, I went through chemo, radiation, and they went to clean my breast out and what have you. So they say I'm good so far. So you feel me now? I'm good. Blessing. And that yeah. year that you didn't do anything, did you tell? Did you tell your family? Did you talk to anyone, or you just stayed in isolation about it? I stayed. I told who I needed to tell. <laughs> I told my oldest daughter, okay? okay? I didn't tell the rest of the family because my oldest daughter is the one that took me to the doctor and what have you. And mm. what now, was she mad at you that you didn't do anything for a year? I'm just curious because my kids well, would have been knee deep in my butt. Mm. I didn't let them know that part of it, Vanessa. I didn't oh. Mm. <laughs> well, guess what? They know now. Yeah, they know, <laughs> they know now. <laughs> oh, I was about to say, yeah. they're going to be fine out now. Them, no, no. And, and, and the thing about it is, I smoked cigarettes for 25 years mm -hmm. and i'm mm. like well god i have breast cancer i'm not smoke well i don't have lung cancer but mm. breast cancer is the most common cancer among black women we are more likely to be diagnosed younger at later stages and with more aggressive forms of the disease which limits our treatment options let me guys ask you this um because like you said you smoked 
And so you know that that's something that came back and, and kind of bit you in the butt later on. Is there anything that you did? And Lisa, you're like, hey, this would be a question for you for like you were in like grade school because you're such a baby now. But is there anything you so did in your life, Twinkie, that you worry about coming back now? And I smoked. Jim, you smoked? Mm -hmm. Cigarettes? Yep. Mm -hmm. Menthol cigarettes and that. Me too. Ooh. Me too. I don't even know what I was thinking. Whole, I mean, um, Benson and Hedges. Uh, why, <laughs> though? Peer pressure. Why? <laughs> Yeah, why? Like, why? Cigarettes are so like I have. A, if a guy smokes you cigarettes, smoke. you're not getting no. But play. it's a different generation. I understand that, Julissa. Yeah. But was it stress and related I or it was just no, cool? No, stress no, related. Like, cool. You cool. No, you cool. No, you cool. cool. No, you cool. I have my own bedroom with a house, two cars, <laughs> and a dog. You were smoking smoke. No, you were cool, cool, honey. High school. You were cool. I was just smoking. Everybody smoked in high school. I smoked. I smoked for one year. True story. I was in eleventh grade. And I smoked for one year. We were in that bathroom, honey. Yes. And then I was in a car. True story. And this is going into the 12th grade. And I'm sitting in the car with some friends. And the windows are up. And they're passing a joint. And they're passing a cigarette. Oh, my goodness. And I looked up. Passing and out. I had them both in a hand. Oh, my God. And you pulled both? No, because it's like, you know, when you're, when you're, kid, when you're a teenager, <laughs> cigarette. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! And I looked up and I had a joint in one hand and a cigarette in one hand. I was like, "Okay, this has got to stop." Yeah. And it was, I was good. It took that one moment. That it took one that one moment. We need those moments in our life. What was the moment do. that changed you? What, was uh, there a moment that are you ready something that for switched the you? That changed yeah. Me? What's the moment that changed you? I changed was at something. Cafe, I was at Cafe America. I'll never forget this. I don't know if you know Michael Kenneth Williams. He played Omar on The Wire. We yeah. went out to dinner. And this beautiful woman walked in and she kind of, she had this Phyllis Hyman kind of look. And I always had a girl crush on Phyllis Hyman. I've always wanted to look like her. And I saw you this do. woman walk yeah, in. Gotta do, yeah. and <laughs> thank you very much. That's a huge compliment. <laughs> and she walked in and she just kind of glided. And she came from the door and I was like, wow, she is gorgeous and just stunning. And she just walked right by us. And then we got this waft of like cigarettes and <laughs> mm. mixture. And it was absolutely disgusting. Disgusting. Wow. And I said to Mike, I said, Mike, you always tell me the truth, bro. Do I smell like that? What, you asked that? Mm. And he said, yep, Twink, you do. Wow. Wow. Because we think spraying is going to <laughs> And I just stopped it. there. That was it. I'm too vain to stink Ooh. like that. Yeah, the scent overpowered the beauty. It and you did. were like, that can't be me. I can't be me. Like, you know why that's funny, though? That is why. So I didn't drink in college. Okay. At all. I did sorority, did everything. I didn't drink because I grew up like so much about perception, not in a negative way. My mom was always just like, you're not wearing no scarf out this house. Your nails are always going to be done. And she just cared a lot about perception. When I grew up seeing girls drunk, I'm not mad at that. I told myself, I was like, I can't look like that. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. how that, that was the perception I had. And Slap it just always deterred me away from drinking until I started with wine. And mm -hmm. now I have my little bit of wine, you know, here and there. He could be classy. The classy wine knows, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The classy. Yes. Yeah. Right. But I was like, that can't. drunk where somebody's got a. Yeah, it was a vain. It was a vain reason. I was right. like, I would I not look like that. I would not look like that's, that. Girl. That's literally my thing. I smelled like that. And once I figured out, I mean, she looked gorgeous, but she stunk. Mm. Right. If I smell like that, then I've got to stop it. And what a good friend you had that he was honest. Yeah, though. yeah. Mike is honest. A lot of our yeah, friends are Yeah, honest. he kept it real with you. Oh, he did. Yeah. He could have said no, and then you might have still been smoking. I might have. Yeah. I might have. Is there Although anything I like it? bronchitis every year. Oh, well, you know every what? Every that, single that's year why. I you got still, bronchitis. Still, because of the snow. No more bronchitis. But that cigarette smoking every well, year. Well, you know, because the cigarettes, because from the, that one year that I smoked when I stopped, I remember that it took a long time to get yes. that phlegm out. You oh. had that cough yes. and that phlegm. Oh. And it was only a year that I smoked. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm like oh my God, could I imagine had I smoked like for years? Yes. You know what people go through. Mm hmm. Yep, not cute.